Hello, today we are going to talk about sentence types, the different types of sentences we have in English. In English, we have three types of sentences. The first type is the simple sentence, the compound sentence, and finally, the complex sentence. Let's start with the simple sentence. The simple sentence has one independent clause. So when you read this, the first question you probably ask yourself, what is a clause? Well, a clause is a subject-verb combination. That's it, where I have a subject and a verb, put them together to get one idea or meaning. Then, when we talk about independent, what is independent? Independent means that it can stand by itself. And another way to say that is that it has a complete idea. So when we're talking about simple sentences and this idea of a complete idea, where it's an independent clause, it has a complete idea, let's take a look at these two sentences. Dan eats lunch. We have a subject, Dan, we have the verb, eats, and we have a complete idea. With this sentence, when Dan eats lunch, it has a subject and verb, Dan and eats. What it doesn't have is the complete idea. Because I have the word when, when Dan eats lunch, I keep, I'm wanting more. It's not complete. Okay. However, Dan eats lunch, that is a complete idea. So, simple sentences are one independent clause, but when I have an independent clause, it could have more than one subject, and it could have more than one verb as well. So I have certain formulas for simple sentences. The first one is just where I have one subject and one verb. I could also have two subjects and one verb. I could have a one subject, two verbs. Another possibility, two subjects, two verbs. So let's look at some examples that accompany those formulas. If we look at the picture, we see the child is eating a hot dog. So we have subject, then verb. Just one subject, one verb. The girl eats a hot dog. The girl is the subject, eats is the verb. Now we had SV, the girl eats a hot dog. Now in this picture down here, we have two boys, and they're both doing the same action of eating ice cream. Let's look at the example sentence. So here I have SSV, subject Bob, subject Joe, verb eat. So we have Bob and Joe eat ice cream, that would be SSV. Okay, so we have SV, we have SSV. Now in this picture way down here, we can see maybe two actions, smoking, drinking. We have SVV, my friend smokes and drinks. Friend is the subject. I have one action, smokes, another action, drinks. And for this last, oh, one more. If you look way down there in the corner, we have two children, and then we're going to have two actions. They're watching TV, and they're eating. So here I have two subjects and two verbs. The boy and girl watch TV and eat cereal. Let's move on and talk about the compound sentence. The compound sentence has two independent clauses. 
If we remember before, we were talking about the simple sentence has one independent clause, compound sentence has two independent clauses. And if we remember, a clause is a subject verb combination. Independent means it can stand by itself. Or, in other words, it has a complete idea. So two clauses that have a complete idea. Our formula that we'll use to talk about compound sentences is going to be IC. IC means independent clause. And then there's a comma. And then we have another IC, another independent clause. So we have two independent clauses, independent clause, independent clause, with a comma between them. And then we have a small C there. I'll get to that. So another word, way to describe compound sentences would be with the second formula here. Same thing. SV, comma, C, SV. So if this is my formula for compound sentences, IC, comma, C, IC, independent clause, independent clause, there is a question of what's that C stand for? The C is coordinating conjunction. So a coordinating conjunction is a word that joins two equal things. So it joins two equal things. In this case, it joins two equal uh, independent clauses. Examples. The most common coordinating conjunctions in English, and, but, and so. So up here with my formula, I would have independent clause, comma, and independent clause. Or I could have independent clause, comma, so, plus independent clause. All right. Well, let's look at some examples of compound sentences. If we start with this picture, we have two people. We have the soccer player. He doesn't seem very happy. He is arguing. We have the referee here. He is also not happy, and he is holding something, the red card. He is kicking the player out of the game with the red card. Let's look at this sentence. I have this first idea, the player argues. That is an independent clause. And the referee gives him a red card. That is also an independent clause. I can take these two independent clauses and I can combine them into one sentence. Aha. The player argues, comma, but the referee gives him a red card. So you can see one independent clause, comma, coordinating conjunction, and then the second independent clause. The one thing I need to remember, when I have this second independent clause, I need a comma before the coordinating conjunction. Ah, yes. Here we see they're holding the trophy. They win the championship. But how do you win the championship? You practice hard. So we have the idea of practice hard and win a championship. So the players practice hard. They win a championship. Two independent clauses. I'll join them together to make one sentence, one compound sentence. The players practice hard, so they win a championship. One independent clause, the players practice hard. Another independent clause, they win a championship. I can join those two together with a comma and so. Another example of a compound sentence where I have two independent clauses. Here, I have one man, he is dribbling the ball. I have another guy, he is trying to steal the ball. So remember, 
the compound sentence is one independent clause, a comma, a coordinating conjunction, and another independent clause. So one player dribbles the ball, comma, and the other player tries to steal the ball. So two independent clauses. First, one player dribbles the ball. The second independent clause, the other player tries to steal the ball. And then I have and, and before and, I have the comma. We're going to move on now, and we're going to talk about the third type of sentence, which is the complex sentence. So the complex sentence has one independent clause. Remember, a clause is a subject-verb combination. Independent is can stand by itself or, in other words, has a complete idea. But the complex sentence, it's one independent clause. It is also has a dependent clause, a dependent clause. So we remember a clause is a complete idea. But what is dependent? Dependent is, well, clause is a subject-verb combination. Sorry. Dependent means it cannot stand by itself, or it does not have a complete idea. Here, in this picture, we have a man. He kicks the ball. The man kicks the ball. And then, so this is a complete idea. The man kicks the ball. After the man kicks the ball, that's not a complete idea. If I say, after the man kicks the ball, you want more. It's not complete. But I could join this with, a complete, with an independent clause, and then I could get a complete idea in a complex sentence. Let's see how we do that. So first, the man kicks the ball. Then, the goalkeeper saves the ball. So, if we join those two ideas, I have after the man kicks the ball, the goalkeeper saves it. So, yeah, the goalkeeper saves it. In that situation, after the man kicks the ball, this is my D dependent clause, and it has this word after, which is what we call a subordinator. And a subordinator, it links the dependent clause to the independent clause. It's what makes this, the dependent clause, dependent. And then here, this is my independent clause. So this is the main clause of the sentence. And after the man kicks the ball, supports it. Or it gives more information about the goalkeeper saves it. So just to review, the complex sentence has one independent clause and one dependent clause. And with complex sentences, there's two ways we can form them. So two formulas. The first one is IC, DC. That would be where the independent clause is first, and then the dependent clause. We look right here. The goalkeeper saves the ball after the man kicks it. The second example, the second formula, is DC, comma, IC. If we notice, this has a comma, this does not. So when I put the dependent clause with the subordinator at the beginning of the sentence, then I need a comma at the end of the dependent clause. So after the man kicks the ball, comma, the goalkeeper saves it. So subordinators, those are the words that are at the beginning of a, com of a dependent clause. There's a lot of them. I'll give you a short list of them here. 
A lot of them have to do with time or showing the verb's relationship to time. And then we'd have the subordinator and then subject and verb after that. So here we have after, before, when, while, until, since, as soon as. Those would all be examples of subordinators that we could use in a complex sentence. A couple of other subordinators, well the first subordinator that I'll talk about that is not a time subordinator is because, so for example, because this is a great video, I will watch it a hundred times. Here I have because the subordinator at the beginning, which makes this first part my dependent clause. And the dependent clause is first. So after that, where it is video, we'll put a comma. And then the independent clause, I will watch it 100 times. I could take this sentence and change it around. I will watch this video a hundred times because it is a great video. In this situation, because I have the independent clause first, no comma is necessary. Another subordinator that we use a lot in English is if. So if we look at this sentence, we see the football team. If the Kansas City Chiefs football team wins, comma, I will be happy. In this situation, yes, I have a comma because if is at the beginning. The subordinator is at the beginning of the sentence, so I'll put a comma at the end of the dependent clause before the independent clause. I can switch it around. I will be happy if the Kansas City Chiefs football team wins, in this situation, the dependent clause is first, and the in, or the independent clause is first, the dependent clause is second. And in that situation, no comma is necessary. So to review sentence types, I've talked about three sentence types today: the compounds, the simple sentence, the compound sentence, and the complex sentence. The simple sentence, remember, is one independent clause. The compound sentence is two independent clauses, and they're joined together with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunctions, and, but, so, are some examples. Finally, we had the complex sentence. The complex sentence is one independent clause and a dependent clause. And when we form complex sentences, I could have two possible patterns. I could put the independent clause first, and then the dependent clause, no comma is necessary. However, if I put the dependent clause first, so the subordinator is at the beginning of the sentence, I will put a comma after the dependent clause and before the independent clause. I hope this helps you understand a little bit about types of sentences. Um, and have a good day.